Hi, and welcome to today's webcast. OpenDNS is now part of Cisco, taking security everywhere. Today I'm joined by David Yulovich and Scott Harrell, who will be discussing the acquisition of OpenDNS by Cisco, as well as covering the new integration of OpenDNS Umbrella and Cisco AMP record. We're very pleased to have our own David Yulovich, founder of OpenDNS, with us today. Having worked for over a decade in the security and internet infrastructure fields, Yulovich identified a need to solve the growing security challenges created by the rise of mobile devices, the shift to cloud applications, and the trend for people to work remotely. Yulovich leads OpenDNS in its mission to help businesses of all sizes connect to the internet with confidence, enabling them to work securely and productively from any device, anywhere. A noted and often cited internet and security expert, Yulovich has a degree in anthropology from Washington University in St. Louis. We're also joined by Scott Harrell, Vice President of Product Management for the Security Business Group at Cisco, with responsibility for the strategy and product direction of the company's security portfolio. In his role, Mr. Harrell leads the product development strategy and business development for Cisco security offers. Mr. Harrell joined Cisco in 2001 and has held several different positions in Cisco, including leading product management and engineering teams. Before joining the security business group in his career at Cisco, he has led software and hardware development teams for the enterprise routing portfolio and led product management for Cisco's enterprise law and network. Prior to Cisco, Mr. Harrell worked in a strategic planning role at Intel Corporation. He holds a master's degree in business administration from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and a Bachelor's of Science from Georgia Institute of Technology. We have plenty of valuable content to share with you in today's webcast, so without further ado, I'd, land things, I'd like to hand things over to David. David? Thanks so much, Courtney, and uh, I am excited to be here today. We're going to just run through the agenda here real quick. Uh, I'm going to give a quick little update uh, on the acquisition uh, and uh, a few thoughts on that. Talk a little bit about how, uh, I'm actually going to hand it off to Scott and let him talk about how OpenDNS fits into the overall Cisco uh, strategy and where security fits into that. Uh, then I will uh, take uh, the keyboard back from Scott and talk a little bit about OpenDNS more specifically and how we really focus on uh, opening up blind spots in the enterprise IT landscape and providing a new layer of security. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and transition over to uh, talk about the announcement we made earlier this week. Uh, about the integration between the Cisco AMP Threat Grid uh, service with the OpenS Umbrella platform. Uh, I think at the end, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for some Q&A, and so we'll take some questions. Uh, and there is a place in the webinar control panel to ask some questions, uh, and we will do our best to get to all of them. So without any further ado, um, so I did want to speak uh, just for, for a moment here. I know that there are some existing OpenDNS customers uh, on the webinar, uh, as well as people that are thinking about OpenDNS and trying to understand a little bit about how we view this acquisition. Um, the first is that uh, we're all very, very excited. We have been big fans of Cisco for many years. Uh, and as we looked to what the changes that were needed in the security industry that needed to take place, we feel like we have a great vision for how to achieve that. But we also look at Cisco's vision, we feel like that's actually a really strong complement to our own. We look at all the resources, the talent, and the technology that Cisco brings to the table as one of the, the largest networking companies in the world and one of the largest security companies in the world. We look at our cloud-delivered security infrastructure, the services we provide, and we look at how we can tie that in with Cisco offerings, some of which you'll hear about today and more of which you'll hear about you know, in the future as our, as our two companies really start to work together on joint, joint offerings. Uh, we think that the, we will be able to ultimately deliver terrific customer value, that we'll be able to create solutions that wouldn't be possible to create, to be created independently, uh, and then we'll deliver them to the market faster, ultimately helping you be protected as customers from adversaries and to help you connect with confidence from wherever you are in the world. That's something we're excited about. I'm excited to be carrying on that mission, and I am excited to have Scott here uh, with me on the webinar, uh, and I'll hand it over to him in just a little bit. To give people a quick uh, update and sort of refresher if they're not familiar with OpenDNS, our goal has always been the same, which is to help people connect with confidence across any device, anywhere in the world, anytime. And when we think about how the enterprise landscape has changed, the way people work, where they work, the devices that they're using to get work done, we really like to articulate that as delivering security for the way that the world works today. And as we talk more about the OpenDNS offering, uh, I think you'll, you'll get a good picture as to how we do that, what our approach is, and why we think we'll ultimately be successful at building the best security products possible and delivering effective security against uh, 
you know, an, an increasingly antagonistic uh, set of adversaries out in the world. Before I jump into all that, I do want to give uh, Scott Harrell a chance to jump in here. I'm going to hand the keyboard control over to him and let him talk a little bit about the uh, overall Cisco uh, the security business group. And uh, so let me give him uh, control. And Scott, uh, it's over to you. Thanks, David. I appreciate the opportunity to come here and talk to the, to the audience here today. What I wanted to start with is a little bit of discussion about Cisco's overall strategy and how OpenDNS fits into that. As David mentioned, um, we are focused on the security everywhere as one of our core strategies. And really what this is about is about extending the coverage for security and embedment everywhere that a customer needs it, whether it's at the endpoint, whether it's at the branch, whether it's the data center, and of course the cloud. And this maps really well to OpenDNS's strategy that David just talked about of taking security anywhere a customer needs it. And we feel strongly that OpenDNS can accelerate our path towards realizing that vision because it does offer such a compelling set of capabilities, whether it's a, as a SaaS cloud platform providing visibility and enforcement to advanced threats, or whether it's as an enabler to our entire portfolio from a Cisco point of view with its fast deployment, its fast time to value for customers, and we can bring those kind of capabilities across our portfolio, or as a threat platform where we can interlock it and interconnect it with our existing threat capabilities and allow that, those capabilities to be extended to a broader set of, of users as they move on and off network. OpenDNS accelerates our path down to all these dimensions and therefore is extremely exciting to us. As we roll forward and, and we look at how this maps to Cisco's overall strategic imperatives, and you know, Cisco looks at the problem in three different ways. We want to be visibility driven, we want to be threat focused, and we want to be plat platform based in everything we do. And if we think about visibility being visibility driven, what this is really about is providing our customers the maximum amount of visibility into what's going on from, the, from an environmental point of view from a threat, from a network, from every piece of context they may need to make a decision and prioritize the response. OpenDNS provides a huge boost to that capability with their ability to provide visibility into the global internet activity. They see a tremendous amount of data that can be used to actually see where hackers are staging attacks and anticipate where they're going to go next. This lends itself very well to Cisco's threat-focused portfolio strategy by enabling a powerful line of defense that can be extended both on-prem and off-prem and, and take that same visibility and tie it together with all the big data analysis that Cisco does every day trying to protect its customers all over the world. And perhaps just as importantly but maybe less uh, understood is, is that Cisco is also looking to do everything it does in a very platform-based approach where we want to open up the platforms and allow them to be highly extensible and highly flexible Open DNS's architecture that has open APIs and ties into third parties seamlessly as well as the Cisco's offers and can deliver that security at massive levels of scale across the world without any impact to performance is something that we can leverage and we can build upon as a platform for the future in the cloud. So really well aligned from a strategic imperatives point of view. And so when you bring these two companies together, you know, what we're probably most excited about is, is that we can see a clear convergence on our goals and on our values about what we're trying to accomplish for the customer and how we're trying to do it. And as you bring them together, that cultural alignment will allow us to accelerate these visions that we both share and bring to the market disruptive technology in a faster time for the customers to realize them to go, you know, defend themselves against these more aggressive adversaries as David was alluding to. Additionally, the ability to bring together these two companies allows us to both augment our research capabilities, which allows us to once again better protect our customers. And then we can start to combine the technologies in new ways and new use cases that provide net new value for the customer. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to David and let him walk you through uh, a little bit more about what OpenDNS does and how it protects customers. So David? Thanks, Scott. That was a uh, that was an awesome overview, and it's been uh, it's been really fun to uh, work with you and your team over the last uh, couple months as we gear up to do big things together. And that is a uh, that is a good segue into diving a little bit deeper into the DNS component of what we offer. Uh, and so, with that, let me uh, see if I can 
manage my slide here. So I think one of the best places to start is, you know, rather than rather than spending too much time on the, the nitty gritty of just the DNS, uh, which we will get into a little bit, it's better to think about more about why why do we take the approaches we take. And the first is because we really think about, you know, when, when Scott talked about that visibility driven approach and how you need to be focused on visibility, DNS is a really lightweight protocol. It's ubiquitous on the internet, it's used by any app, anytime you visit a web page, any device you're using. And so if you think about the way that the enterprise landscape has changed where people are working off network, where they have multiple applications using multiple protocols, and where you want to get as much intelligence and gather as much intelligence as possible, DNS really provides a phenomenal way to, to gather that info and gather that data. And so we think of blind spots in a couple different ways. The first is blind spots from seeing more network traffic. Using DNS allows us to have a comprehensive view of all network traffic. The other, though, is that there's blind spots in terms of visibility in terms of what you see on your network. Today's corporate network is not just what happens inside that corporate castle. It's not just what happens behind the firewall. Today's corporate network extends to people that are working at Starbucks, people that are working at the airport, that are working from home, but also the location of their data and their applications in the cloud. People are increasingly using Salesforce, Dropbox, Google Apps, Live 365. And so you now have a, a enterprise IT landscape where people are sitting at Starbucks, you know, using their own device, accessing Live 365 and Salesforce and Dropbox, and that creates blind spots where IT professionals, security practitioners, and CIOs are limited in terms of their visibility and enforcement. We want to solve all those problems, and DNS is a great place to start with that. And if you look at something like the, the uh, Verizon uh, uh, Data Breach Investigation Report, the DBIR, one of the things that people are in the security research community and people that are trying to help educate and, and uh, advocate to these security practitioners are increasingly making reference to is that DNS is this fundamental protocol that without visibility into it, without using it as a, as a source of insight, you really are losing out on this massive area of intelligence you can use to better understand what is the, the, the composition of elements on your network, what are the infection machines on your, on your network beaconing out to, um, then obviously with OpenNS we turn that into an enforcement point, but monitoring DNS is one of the single best sources of data that somebody can do to get a great uh, uh, lightweight way of seeing all the different uh, aspects of their network telemetry, whether it's infected machines, patterns of behavior of machines, et cetera. And uh, so we obviously focus on providing visibility first and foremost, and then we want to create the tools to, uh, to take enforcement, take action, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. To give a quick uh, overview of the OpenDNS Umbrella offering, Umbrella represents our core product offering. It is a, there, there are a sweet, there are a couple different versions of Umbrella, but the core tenant is that people point their DNS to us. We have some roaming clients who have a virtual machine, um, but in general, there's a very lightweight way to deploy OpenDNS. And what it provides is a very lightweight uh, approach to getting all that visibility. People can turn it on in 30 minutes or less. And then as, as Scott mentioned uh, previously, one of the coolest things about the Umbrella uh, software suite is that there's actually a platform approach. So it takes an API first and a platform first approach to not just delivering security as a cloud service and not just doing it in a way that uh, you know, provides the right policy to the right users at the right time, but can now increasingly integrate other feeds of information, other threat intelligence to provide a comprehensive view or, or, or rather a comprehensive platform for doing enforcement from security threats. So if you imagine that, uh, and we'll talk about this in just a moment, that you maybe have some internal intelligence tools that your security research team is working at, working with, that your incident response team is using, we now have the APIs available so they can feed that intelligence directly into OpenS Umbrella and provide worldwide enforcement in real time. So that means if you have oil rigs in the Gulf, maybe you have sales reps out in the field, you have executives that are on the road or at home, uh, you want to be able be able to provide a consistent set of enforcement and not just do that where you have racked and stacked appliances to get to your network. And Umbrella enables you to do that all from one single pane of glass. So that's something we're very excited about. Uh, and uh, as we get through this, you'll hear about one of the announcements we made earlier this week, which we're uh, even more excited about. To give a, a, a high level view of how we, how we think about where we fit into the network, you know, DNS is, as I mentioned, a fundamental protocol on the internet. So even if you have maybe a next-gen firewall, even if you have a secure web gateway, many of those approaches either only work when you're on-prem, they don't work when you're off-prem very well, they only look at certain ports and protocols, so if you have a secure web gateway, it generally only looks at web traffic. The nice thing about DNS is it works both inbound and outbound. We can prevent resolution to known malicious hosts, 
Or if you have infected machines, we can actually prevent infected machines from beaconing out and exfiltrating data. That's a really, really powerful tool to have in your toolbox as a security practitioner, and we can do it in a way that's both IP or domain or URL agnostic. And so it provides a very, very early uh, uh, and lightweight way to do enforcement, but also if you think about the cybersecurity kill chain, if you already have infected machines, it's not just important to block threats from coming in, you obviously want to raise the bar there, but you also want to prevent malicious hosts from beaconing out or exfiltrating data or reaching out to payload or command and control sites. And by using OpenDNS, you're able to do that both on-premise and off-premise. It's an added layer of defense on-premise, and in many cases off-premise, it's the only layer of defense and one that's very powerful uh, and quite easy to deploy. In terms of how that, that, that platform and that foundation for delivering security actually turns into something that's quite effective, one of the ways that we do it is we do acquire, as, as Scott mentioned earlier on, we have a tremendous amount of data that we see. We have six, more than 65 million daily active users that run through the OpenDNS infrastructure every single day. We log, store, and analyze that data. That is the global recursive DNS service we provide. Um, and then what happens is we have a security research team that is applying a whole bunch of models and classifications, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But ultimately what that, what that drives is our ability to identify and infer malicious and potentially malicious domains in real time and to ultimately turn that into enforcement for our customers. So for instance, we might see that a malicious domain name is hopping from IP address to IP address to IP address, and we may be able to use different classification systems we've built and different models that we've built to identify where it may hop to next or how that domain name may permutate so that as different people are getting you know, potentially infected, we're able to block the different threats from those different domains and do that very, very uh, aggressively. And so it's a, different layer of appro it's a different approach to threat defense. Scott's going to talk about some other approaches, one that we, we've now integrated with the Cisco AMP threat grid approach, but having different layers of defense and having the ability to use our satellite overview of data allows us to have a really unique perspective on threat intelligence and to turn that into actionable threat enforcement for our customers. The net result for customers is not just enforcement, but also real-time streaming of all their logs and all their data from, a glo from their global vantage point, right? So if somebody has 100 branch offices or 1,000 you know, employees working remotely, we want to provide all the logs and all the analysis to people in one consistent viewpoint. We both provide it in a pane of glass on our website and our dashboard, but also we provide the API so that people stream those logs into their own systems and into their own infrastructure. To give people a sense when I talk about this satellite overview of traffic and you know, this really unique perspective on data, there are, there are companies out there, we'll talk about the partnership we just announced with, with Cisco AMP DirectGrid, that are doing analysis of individual binaries of malware and doing behavioral analysis and looking at behavioral indicators of badness. We take a different approach that's quite complementary, where we look at a global vantage point. We want to help people be able to understand, are they victim one of 50,000 and they're dealing with a commodity threat, or are they victim maybe one of one and this is a more targeted threat and they want to go dive in and do some instant response. You can really imagine how working with someone that's doing behavioral analysis of malware and pairing that up with our global context can really deliver all the context and information that a customer needs to be able to take action to both deliver automated enforcement but to also do effective instant response. So today we have more than, as I mentioned, 65 million daily active users. That translates to more than 70 billion requests per day that we're log storing and analyzing. We also have this global infrastructure with 25 data centers and we interconnect at every major internet exchange point around the world. That means today we have more than 2,000 peering sessions across 500 different regional ISPs and we see traffic from a wide demographic cross-section of internet users including more than 10,000 paying enterprise customers today. So I do want to talk just for, for a moment here uh, as before I wrap up and uh, let Scott talk about the uh, Cisco AMP record integration uh, that we announced earlier, but we really do try to focus on treating security as a first-class citizen at OpenDNS. We have a whole team of researchers. Uh, I know Cisco has the same ethos with their Talos group where they really want to focus on not relying on the kindness of strangers or outsourcing their security to somebody else. They want to treat security as a first-class citizen. We do the same thing. So we ingest millions of data points per second. We apply all the different models and classification systems we've built, many of which we've blogged about. So if you're interested in, in learning more about that, you can check out our Security Labs blog. And ultimately, that results in us identifying known malicious hosts, potentially malicious hosts, and doing predictive security for people in a way that's very, very easy to deploy. I do want to talk uh, about our platform. And as Scott mentioned, 
one of the things that's one of the sort of least understood, I think, about the, both the direction that Cisco is moving and the direction that OpenS is moving is that we recognize that, you know, as Cisco as a networking company and OpenS as a, as a company that is cloud first, really what we're able to really capitalize on is our ability to leverage all the different products in the Cisco security portfolio, as well as the existing investments customers have made into their other security purchases. So we have the umbrella platform uh, where we are now able to ingest data from a variety of threat intelligence sources, whether they're uh, appliances like FireEye or Cisco AMP ThreatGrid, whether they're threat intelligence feeds like ZeroFox uh, or some of the threat intel platforms like ThreatQuish or ThreatConnect, all of those different sources of intelligence and those indicators of compromise can now feed in using our APIs in an automated way into the umbrella platform and be delivering enforcement globally. It's quite a powerful solution for customers who have who often come to us and they'll say, hey, I have all this, this intel, I know about all these bad things, but how do I block them? How do I turn that into enforcement? Or maybe they say, I have an appliance, but it only blocks me at headquarters. How do I block people when they're outside the office? How do I turn my 9 to 5 enforcement into 24 7 enforcement? And the umbrella platform is what lets them do that. And that's something that we're going to continue to invest in, uh, and it's something that we're very excited about. I'm now going to hand it over to Scott and let him talk about uh, the Cisco AMP threat grid integration that we announced earlier this week, which I think uh, provides a really uh, strong indication of just how strong of a fit and just how many touch points there are between OpenS and the existing Cisco security portfolio. Uh, so with that, Scott, I will hand it off to you. David, yeah, it's a great point. The two solutions are extremely complementary, and we're thrilled that already here so close to close we're able to bring together net new value for the customers uh, from an, an analytics point of view and an integration point of view. So what is AMP Threat Grid? If you look at this solution specifically it's a set of capabilities that provide to the customer a very robust unified malware analysis uh, capability and really this is not just about rendering a verdict on the actual uh, file that may or may not be malicious, but also providing visibility into all those different attributes that have led us to that conclusion. And when you think about marrying that together with OpenDNS's ability to actually extend that same visibility to their customers in a broader scale across the more mobile customer base, that's extremely valuable. When we look at legacy solutions, a lot of the challenges they have is that from an efficacy point of view, they're, they're they're rooted in, in a lot of legacy solutions that are rudimentary at best from an analysis point of view. And this can lead to oftentimes misclassification of malware, it can lead to low quality analysis and lack of visibility. With Cisco AMP Threat Grid, we provide best in class analysis, best in class visibility, especially against those more hard to detect malware that's becoming much more uh, evasive and built to actually evade many traditional legacy technologies. Additionally, though, we provide a huge degree of visibility, and if you look at a lot of the, the competitors out there, they're not providing that same degree of visibility in the platform and in the dashboard that allows an analyst to figure out what to do next once they get a piece of information or once they have an IOC, as David referenced earlier, an indicator of compromise. And so with AMP Threat Grid, we overcome a lot of those challenges. We provide a ton of malware analytics that are very contextual based. And we leverage the cloud, which maps very well to kind of the architecture that we believe is going to be there for the future and part of why we're so enthusiastic about OpenDNS, to actually provide a higher degree of power and scale, but also to allow us to provide different types of analysis that sometimes can't be provided on-prem. We do realize this, this solution also as an on-prem appliance, often fed with intelligence from the cloud. And it's a very open architecture that does have uh, open APIs that can easily be integrated with third parties. And a good example of that is what we're talking about today and what we're announcing uh, earlier this week around OpenDNS being integrated with the AMP Threat Grid capabilities. And so, you know, when we look at OpenDNS and adding it to the security portfolio for Cisco overall, a lot of times we like to talk about this, this portfolio and, and the concepts and the constructs of the before, during, and after model. What do I do before an attack? What do I do during an attack? And what do I do after an attack? And really with OpenDNS being integrated with 
AMP threat grid, it really extends a lot of those protections that sometimes are in the after phase, you know, after I've realized the file is transited in my network, that it is bad, what do I do about it? How do I block uh, exfiltration of data? How do I block rogue IP addresses? This allows you to interconnect AMP threat grid with OpenDNS and provide that ex extension of protection to users both as they're mobile, but also as they're going and trying to access sometimes these uh, malicious sites. Additionally, it provides a huge amount of coverage across other parts of the portfolio with the umbrella service, providing better block, uh, better protection in the before and during phases of an attack continuum cycle. So very excited about this. The two solutions coming together already in such a short time really shows that these teams are going to provide some incredible disruptive innovation to, to the market. And with that, I'll hand it back to David. Uh, and to talk you through a, a little bit more about kind of where we're going and, uh, you know, a little bit more about the integration that we've provided with AMP and ThreatGrid and Umbrella. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Scott. That was a great overview and I think it really explains the power of the, uh, the two, uh, two technologies uh, coming together. And, uh, yeah, very impressive we were able to get that out uh, right uh, at the time of launch. Let me take my keyboard back here. And so uh, I do want to just walk through a quick uh, technical uh, sort of uh, high-level overview of how this actually works for folks that are curious. Um, you know, I think before we do that, one of the key parts about having a stronger security posture, especially in a world where we're trying to move from 9 to 5 security into 24-7 security that works both on-premise and off-premise, is that with all these great tools doing intelligence and analysis of malware and potential malware threats, um, turning that into automated enforcement is really uh, an important step to take. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do that are not false positive sensitive, uh, that do not require any human intervention, uh, as increasingly uh, industry analysts are encouraging, uh, at least at the very least, to raise the bar so that all the commodity threats and the known bad threats can be blocked automatically. So just to clear a, a quick picture of what this looks like and what, what Scott talked about looks like from a sort of a, a architecture kind of diagram. Uh, the AMP, uh, the Cisco AMP Threat Grid uh, service comes in both an appliance version as well as a cloud offered version. Uh, and so for folks that are submitting files, they're not just going to get the benefit of their own binary samples and their own malware samples that they're submitting, but also one of the coolest parts about the Cisco AMP Threat Grid service is that you can harness the collective intelligence of all of the customers who are submitting intelligence into that technology, identifying behavioral indicators that indicate some kind of malicious activity, a malicious actor, uh, and then from there, what is, it, what is possible is by using the AMP record APIs, we've done this on a back end, so it's automatic for customers, just by popping in your Cisco AMP record API key, the umbrella enforcement platform can both get the globally available uh, threat intelligence from Cisco AMP record, uh, and I'm not sure exactly where the current status is, but I believe that ultimately, even the individual uh, API submissions from individuals will also be able to be blocked from the Cisco AMP Threat Grid uh, service. And so what it means is that customers can go from, you know, grabbing a unknown uh, uh, binary, you know, that whether it's known bad or known good, that has some sort of unknown context, they can feed that into the Cisco AMP Threat Grid service automatically. That now happens both they can do it manually or they can do it through the automatic uh, abilities off the wire. Uh, and then from there, if it's determined to be something malicious, and using all the different indicators and the risk score associated by Cisco AMP Threat Grid, that can then be turned and pushed into the umbrella service for automatic enforcement. That's very, very powerful. It then, can, it then gets logged so you can see which Cisco AMP Threat, threat Grid uh, malicious uh, binaries are tied back to your logs. And I think this really sets the stage for just how powerful this both cloud delivered security approach can be, as well as an API driven and platform approach to security, where you really take the best. Uh, capabilities of different offerings and pair them together to build a very, very strong security posture uh, and ultimately to raise the bar against adversaries. So I, mean, I think I've covered this. I'm going to leave this in here for uh, you know the long-term recording as people want to catch up and see what we're talking about. But ultimately, the, one of the, the primary goals in security is to reduce the time to respond, to reduce the time to react to reduce the attack dwell time, so whether you have been compromised and you want to be alerted quickly. Um, this is something that Cisco has focused on uh, for the last year or so and really made incredible strides to helping reduce the time to detect instances or detect breaches. 
At the same time, you also want to be able to prioritize your mental calories if you are doing incident response. And so tying in with the different contextual uh, insight and intelligence from Cisco Amp Direct Grid, from the OpenAI's product portfolio, a customer really is able to uh, say, hey, wait a minute, I'm getting 3 million alerts a day. How do I focus my mental calories on the threats that matter and ignore the commodity threats? And ultimately, we're doing these in both automated ways as well as providing all of the tools to help an incident responder actually do that manually as they go through and try to focus on which incidences they need to spend their time on, which ones require a deep dive, which ones might be that commodity PayPal fish, which are annoying to the employee but don't represent systemic risk to the company. And uh, so this is something that really highlights the, the power there and it's something that people can get up and running with very quickly. I have a little uh, one, two, three guide here. Uh, so people that point their, open DNS, their DNS to OpenDNS, they paste in their Cisco AMP record API key into the umbrella dashboard, and then automatically there is real-time enforcement uh, from the threats. It could not be easier. And this is the kind of security integrations that really the market is both demanding and until now has not been able to fully achieve. Uh, so you know, lots of excitement around this both, uh, on both teams and with customers and uh, we would encourage you to get started today. I think, uh, you know, as, as we say here on my final slide, it really, you really can get started in 30 seconds. Uh, there is an automated free trial set up on our website. If you go to signup.opendns.com slash free trial, uh, you'll be up and running with a 14-day uh, uh, trial account of the OpenDNS Enterprise service, and uh, we would love to have you try it out, and if you have a, if you're an existing Cisco AMP directory customer, put in your API key and you'll see uh, see how it all works and we'd love to help you out with it.